Hello everyone. So this is the continuation of our series of discussions about group theory, where in part one, we discussed the definition of group theory and how important it is for quantum mechanical systems and classical systems. Particularly, this is very useful for Lorentz transformations, quantum chromodynamics, and so on. Or uh, if you are fond of the general theory or the special theory of relativity by Albert Einstein, or if you are fond of the motion of the electrons in solid state physics, for example, or in condensed matter physics, basically this group theory is very useful. Now today we will be discussing the part two, which is the homomorphism, isomorphism, and matrix representations of, of the group. Now basically, as we know, if we have two groups or more than one group, no? for example, this is group number one, and we have here group number two. And as we know, there are elements of the group, no? or there are members of the group. See, we have here A, B, C, uh, where A, B, C are elements or members of group one. And we also have here uh, A, B, C, where this capital A, B, Cs, are, or capital letters A, B, C, are the members of group two. Now, as we know, uh, if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence or two-to-two -two correspondence between the elements of these groups, or and so on, or three on three, three to three correspondence. So basically, we can we can have okay this uh, this uh, relationships. If the correspondence between the elements of two groups preserves the group multiplication, it doesn't matter if this is one to one correspondence or two to two correspondence. We can say that this is homomorphic or homomorphism. But if the correspondence between the elements of two groups is one to one, so this is elements of two groups, is one to one, still preserving the multiplication, we say that it's isomorphic or the group is an isomorphic group. Now we consider the time independent Schrodinger equation given by this equation, which says that the Hamiltonian times the wave function, and here are uh, psi. Okay, is the wave function. Okay, is equal to the energy times the wave function. And assume that it stays invariant under a group G of transformations R and G. When we say that this is invariant, no, we have this is uh, invariant. It means that uh, even if we apply some transformations for, for this uh, operation or we operate some matrix um, transformations or matrices, we can say that uh, this still change or this still is unchanged, no? unchanged. So um, consequently, each is the same in a rotated coordinate system no? because of course it's invariant. So if we have this rotation transformation or transformation due to this rotation rotation operator, for example, or rotation matrix operating on the Hamiltonian and multiplied to the inverse of this operator, obviously this is still equal to the Hamiltonian. Okay, that is rotations from the group. And we have to consider here that H actually commute. Now take a solution psi from the Schrodinger equation and rotate it with R. An element no, of the group, okay, uh, we have here group such that the solution psi from the Schrodinger equation yields uh, this one. We have the rotation operator times psi. And we can have this, by considering this one, we can have this uh, equation which says that all rotated solutions R psi are degenerate in energy or form a vector space that we call as multiplet. Let us now assume that or let us now assume that this vector space V psi of transformed solutions has a finite dimension n. Let psi1, psi2 up to psi n be a basis. Since R psi j is a member of the multiplet, we can expand it in terms of its basis. So uh, if we are going to get the mathematical representation or mathematical notation for this one, we have R sub psi j is actually equal to this summation, no? which 
basically is equal to the sum of Rjk times psi k. Thus, in each or with each transformation R and G, we can associate a matrix R equals Rjk. We also can take any element of V psi and by rotating with all elements R of G transformation into all other elements of V psi, then the representation is called an irreducible representation. If the direct sum of two vector spaces is spanned by the basis vectors of both vector spaces, then we call the representation as reducible representation. Then we can find a unitary matrix so that if we multiply u as a function of rjk by its adjoint, and this is actually the adjoint of u, okay, this is a unitary matrix. Okay, or sometimes we read this one as u dagger. This is equal to this matrix where obviously we can see that all the off-diagonal elements, these are off-diagonal elements, these are off-diagonal elements, okay, and these are off-diagonal elements, off-diagonal. When we say off-diagonal elements, it means that these are the elements okay, that are not located or that are not part of the diagonal of the matrix. Okay, now, uh, here we have R is a block diagonal for all R of G and all matrices R, J, K. For example, uh, if we can imagine the uh, states of the hydrogen, for example, we have the two S states of hydrogen, R1 would be a unitary 2 by 2 matrix, where we can represent it in terms of this one, okay, uh, where A, B, C, D are the elements of the matrix. So uh, I guess that's all. If you have some questions or clarifications regarding homomorphism, isomorphism, and matrix representation of, of the group, you can just type your comments or questions in the comment section of this video. And basically, if you want me to derive something related to group theory, you can just, again, type your concerns in the comment section. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you in our next videos.